trucks are awesome. But you didn't need us to tell you that. Thing is, some are built to last longer, go further, and cost you less to keep on the road, more so than others. We scoured the internet talk to several other professional technicians and crunch the numbers so you don't have to. Today on Idealist, the 13 most reliable trucks of all time. Let's get into it. Let's jump right in with one of the most crowded and hotly debated classes of truck there is, the compact to midsize light duty pickup. Starting with, and these are in no particular order, the famously unkillable Toyota Hilux. If you've never seen the old Top Gear episode where the trio tries to kill the diesel Hilux, stop what you're doing and go watch it now. These little trucks are famously indestructible. Produced from 1968 to present day, Toyota's workhorse is now on its eighth generation and paved the way for its most beloved North American market sibling, the Tacoma. While the Tacoma is the highest residual value vehicle you can buy here in the States, in no small part thanks to its incredible reliability, it's the Hilux that takes the cake for all-out robustness. From the four-cylinder clear on up to the supercharged six, gasoline or diesel, manual or automatic, it's hard to go wrong with a Hilux. The Nissan D21 hard body is an absolute legend. In fact, it might just be the only other truck on this list that truly rivals the Hilux. You see, Datsun has been building trucks since 1934, and by the time they rolled out the world-renowned D21 series trucks, it could be argued that they perfected the formula. It was sold under several different names across the globe. You blokes down in Australia know it as the Navara, for instance. But the double wall bed construction and overall boxy design made the hard body name stick. Designed to compete directly with the Hilux, Nissan's take was honestly just as good, and in some markets, favored. So if you want a truck that's as reliable and as capable as the Toyota, but you don't want to spend Toyota money, the D21 might just be the truck for you. Like the other two on this list so far, Mitsubishi is no stranger to building tough, reliable equipment. The difference here is Mitsubishi was and is known for making some of the toughest commercial vehicles and machinery there is. They're experts in everything from electronics, clear on up to the massive box truck that's bringing you the junkyard engine for your K-Swap project this Christmas, and even the forklift that's gonna unload it. So when Mitsubishi decided to compete with the other Japanese trucks, they brought the firepower. While the Mighty Max and its rebranded Dodge Dakota spinoff might not be the first trucks that come to mind in their segment, they're often much cheaper than some of the others on this list and truth be told, no less reliable. I'll be the first to admit, the Honda Ridgeline isn't exactly what immediately springs to mind when it comes to a rough and tumble pickup truck. That being said, even though it's not a body-on-frame, steel-clad workhorse like some of the others on this list, they're actually, surprise, really reliable. Now, they're not going to win any towing tests or hold up to bouncing off boulders on the trail as well as pretty much every other truck we've got here. But if you just need a well-made, comfortable, reliable vehicle that's capable of doing some truck things, the Honda Ridgeline is a solid choice. The first generation trucks did have some problems with their transmissions, but the second generation has so far been reportedly rockstar reliable. Us Americans have built our share of reliable pickups, but when it comes to smaller trucks, the first compact US made truck that really made the cut was Chevrolet's S10. The last generation of the S10, in our opinion, was the best, but the earlier trucks weren't bad either, albeit not quite as reliable as the Japanese counterparts. Whether it be the four-cylinder or the six-cylinder option, the engines were pretty good, aside from the intake manifold gaskets. And you can get them with a manual transmission that's basically bulletproof. Go for the automatic and, well, it's the 4L60E, the inventor of the five neutrals. <laughs> Luckily though, you can get an upgraded rebuilt one installed for around a thousand bucks. 
Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger. Ford and Ranger. The Ford Ranger is a solid little pickup. Fords, well, even though they sell the hell out of them, don't honestly have the greatest reputation for reliability. But honestly, that reputation started to change with the third generation Ranger. The original Ranger was a trim level of the full-size F-Series pickup, but when the compact standalone Ranger model was launched to replace the Courier and take on the S10 and the Japanese trucks, Ford loyalists had options. Except, it wasn't very good. There just wasn't a whole lot to sway people to buy it over one of its competitors. By the time the third generation pickups rolled around in 1998 though, well, a lot changed. The Ranger was now an all Mazda design, and if you needed an affordable, compact, reliable, capable little pickup, suddenly it was sort of the obvious choice. Okay, so what about full-size trucks? We're gonna split this up into two categories. See, here in the States, we call everything capable of a half ton, or roughly a thousand pounds payload capacity, a full-size truck. Anything less is mid-size or compact or light duty, which makes sense, and anything larger is still just a full-size truck, even though they get physically much bigger. So we're gonna call the half tons full-size, medium duty, and anything bigger than that HD or heavy duty, okay? Starting with... GM's CK generation of pickup truck ran for four generations, starting all the way back in 1960. And every single generation has been a solid choice when it comes to choosing a four-wheeled companion. In fact, we're pretty confident there's no other classic truck that's as sought after. Obviously, unless it's been insanely maintained or lightly restored, a truck from the 60s, 70s, or even 80s is not going to be the most reliable way to tow your race car. Although, our buddy Derek from Vice Grip Garage begs to differ. Thing is, the last half of the last generation trucks, built from around 1991 to 1996, all the way through the first generation Silverado, when Silverado was spun off as its own sub-brand, are incredibly reliable pickups. Like the S10 we talked about earlier, if you get one with the 4L60 transmission, expect to have to replace that at some point in its life. But besides that, an older Chevy might just be the best way to get into the pickup truck game. What about new trucks? Well, according to JD Power, Ford's latest F-150 scores pretty high on the list. Ford's F-Series trucks don't have the greatest reputation for reliability. It's not horrible, per se, but there was the whole Triton engine thing. And the Power Stroke is, well, not the best. But the latest generation of EcoBoost engines are proving to be a really solid option. While some of the earlier ones had a few issues, overall they've been pretty reliable. And from the info we've gathered, most any problem owners had, Ford was quick to step in and resolve. And the V8s on offer today seem to be extremely robust. All that being said, for 2022 the Ram 1500 actually ranks higher than the F-150. But given the 1500 Ram's track record, I think we'll have to wait and see. Just what is it that makes the Toyota Tundra, or T100 as it was initially launched, so damn good? Aside from offering legendary Toyota build quality and reliability, it was the first full-size truck offered here in North America anyway from a Japanese automaker. Meaning, it was the first to be capable of hauling a sheet of plywood between the wheel wells. The T100 is a rock-solid truck, but truth be told, they're underpowered, even in the optional supercharged configuration. So when the boys at Toyota went back to the drawing board for the successor, the Tundra, they decided for the first time a V8 would be an option. Also, to skirt the chicken tax, which is a subject for another time, they started building them right here in the States. In fact, strangely, it's the most American-made vehicle you can buy, apparently. If you need a full-size pickup truck capable of doing full-size pickup truck things, don't gloss over the Tundra. GM's Duramax-equipped trucks probably offer the best mix of daily drivable comfort with true stump-pulling capability. The older Detroit diesel trucks were solid too, but the switch to Duramax was a game-changer. 
Not only were the engines much more powerful, but thanks to the frankly awesome Allison gearbox bolted to them, these trucks, when taken care of, last a very long time. Any generation Duramax seems to be a pretty safe bet, except the very newest ones, weirdly. They're having complaints of harsh shifting, various electrical issues, and interior quality concerns. Go for, say, a 2006 model year with the LLY engine, and you'll have yourself one hell of a truck. But if you want the ultimate workhorse, it's gotta be a Cummins. Next time you take a road trip, just take notice how many trucks out on the highway putting in the work are powered by Cummins. Ask nearly any hotshot car carrier, and if it's not gonna be a full-blown semi-truck, they're doing it with a Cummins. There's a reason for that. Dodge and Ram diesel trucks are consistently ranked some of the highest in reliability. The transmissions can be a weak spot here, and just like the other American-made trucks, there are a few other quality concerns. But if you're looking for turnkey, dead reliability that's specifically engineered to work hard for a really long time, at the expense of ride quality and some interior material craftsmanship, look no further than a second or third gen Cummins. While petrol-powered variants of heavy-duty trucks are often looked over since they get frankly atrocious fuel mileage and typically don't make as much power, the V10-powered Ram is one that should be considered. Yes, it still has the transmission problems of the Cummins trucks, which, by the way, is often due to improper maintenance procedures. These transmissions still had adjustable bands and no one ever adjusts them. The V10 actually made more power than the Cummins diesel, so if fuel economy isn't a huge concern, save yourself some big bucks and find a V10-powered Ram. Okay, so as we said earlier, power stroke engines haven't always been the greatest especially as of late. But the old 7.3 was a rock star engine. Developed by International, anytime you see an old farm truck with a half million miles on it, chances are it's either a Cummins or an older Power Stroke. Every single truck on this list has its share of common problems, but major powertrain failures on this bad boy are basically unheard of. All right, so there we have it. The top most reliable trucks of all time. Now. No list is perfect, but what did you guys think of our picks? Should we have included the Nissan Frontier or Titan? What about the old Dodge Power Wagon or later big block Chevys? Just let us know down in the comments. Our top pick? Well, it's gotta be the Hilux, if we could actually get one here in the States. But not every truck fits everyone's needs, so that's gonna be up to you. Go check out some other idealist videos like this one right over here where we dive into the worst truck engines. Or go watch whatever YouTube thinks is best for you right down here. This is Trav, this has been Ideal, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.